Okay, so we're doing our first unit in physical science. It says, what is physical science? Physical science is the study of non-living matter. It's broken into two subcategories. The first is physics, the study of motion and energy and how matter is affected by either of these. And also chemistry, which is the study of reactions. We are going to start our year with chemistry, and after winter break, we will start physics. The definition of science, the process of gathering knowledge about the natural world. The goal is to explain how things are possible. The scientific method, <coughs> a series of steps used to solve a problem. It doesn't have an exact order of the steps but all the steps are included. The first step, however, is to ask a question. And it cannot be a broad or a wide question, meaning it has to be very specific. Which of these scientific questions is a good question? We determined that the first one is not a good question because it's measuring feelings. The second one is a good question, and yes, plants do move to get their food. And the third one, intelligence, again, is one of those things that's not truly something that can be measured. Observations are done by using your senses. Looking at it, touching it, smelling it, seeing it, tasting it, if it's safe to. A hypothesis is a possible explanation that is first based on research. It is not a random guess. It has to be written if such and such occurs, then this will happen. And it must be testable. So what's wrong with this hypothesis? If a person drinks a monster each morning, then they will feel much more energetic during the day. Again, it's talking about feelings which are not measurable. Right. Experiment is what you do to test your hypothesis. There are lots of parts to an experiment, and we call this the experimental design. A control is used if you need to compare what you're testing to something that has been unchanged. Not every experiment has a control. Constants have to stay the same in each setup to ensure that only one thing is being tested. If I'm testing a certain brand of dog food, I need to test it on dogs that are all the same sex, the same age, the same type of dog, given the same amount of food at the same time every day. Those are all constants. The independent variable is what you're testing and also should be the first part of your hypothesis. Your dependent variable is what you are measuring and should be the second part of your hypothesis. So let's practice. Laundry detergent A claims to be the best on grass stains. I want to see if it's true. I'm testing it against two brands, sorry, that claim the same thing. What am I testing? My independent variable is going to be the detergent. What am I measuring? My dependent variable is going to be how well it takes off the grass stain. My constants, the same washer, the same material, the same size stain, the same water temperature, the same amount of detergent, and so on. A good hypothesis for this experiment would say if detergent A is used, because that's the independent variable, then the grass stain will go away. That's my dependent variable. Okay, you should record and analyze your results through data. If only a graph is given, the IV always is on the x-axis, which is right here. And your dv is always on your y-axis, which is over here. So even just a graph alone would help you figure out the independent and dependent variables. Next, using your data, you form a conclusion. What did you learn? Was your hypothesis supported or disproven? Where will you go next? You then need to, as a scientist, share or communicate your results to avoid another scientist from doing exactly the same thing, wasting time and money. You always need to repeat a good experiment. Once doesn't prove anything. 
So it needs to be done at your level at least three times in real science, hundreds, thousands of times. A model is what you use if you can't show somebody the actual thing. Atoms are too small to be seen, so a model is used to show what you believe exists in the atom and how it works. Um, a solar system couldn't be put into someone's hands, but you could give them a model of how you believe it works. It says it can be physical. It can be a concept, like over here, the bottom right shows the magnetosphere. It's a concept. You can't really see the magnetic field, but in this model of it, we can see how they believe it works. It could be mathematical. This is a map that has drawn this area down to scale so that you can hold it in your hands. A theory is an explanation that is consistent with many tests and observations. It is not, again, a random guess. A theory is accepted as true among scientists. A law, however, is something that is always true 100% of the time. So, the speed of gravity is a law. Evolution, a theory. Inertia, a law. The Big Bang is a theory. Not because we don't know what happened when the universe began, but because we've never seen it form. So the theory is based on the fact that the oldest objects are on the outskirts of the universe, they're quasars, and that the younger objects are towards the center, that everything inside the universe is spreading outwardly from the center, showing that there had to have been some kind of explosion in the middle, sending everything outward. So it's based on what we do know, but it can't be a law unless we saw it ourselves. Science safety. Always follow your directions. If chemicals get on you, you need to wash your hands or arm or wherever it is for one full minute, timing it. Hair and sleeves back when we use chemicals or fire. Goggles are always a must. And no horseplay. The metric system. It's now called the International System of Units. We use this in science because it is most precise. It's based on the powers of 10. The prefix milli means one out of a thousand, so one thousandth. Centi means one out of one hundred. Deci is one out of ten, and kilo means multiplied by one thousand. Length is measured using the meter. It can be centimeter, millimeter, kilometer, but the basic unit is the meter. Smaller objects, we use a meter stick or a ruler. So which unit of measurement would you use? To measure the length of a book, you would use centimeters. From school to your house, kilometers. Eraser and a pencil, millimeters. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. Think of a balloon. It starts with a small volume. Each puff of air that you put into it, the volume increases. You use a graduated cylinder to find the volume of a liquid or an irregular object. The fluid inside of it forms a meniscus, which is here in the picture. It's this curve, and you always want to measure it from the bottom. If it is a regular solid, you would use length times width times height. Whoops. Sorry. All right, so let's go over. I'm going to add a page here and go over something really quickly. OK. So let's say I have a marble. I can't really do length times width times height. So instead, I'm going to have this graduated cylinder. And let's say I put 10 milliliters of water in it. Excuse my drawing, I'm using the mouse. OK, so now I put the marble in the graduated cylinder. The water now rises up to 12 milliliters. So that means the volume of the marble is 2. I measure the difference from where I started and where it ends. If it is a box though, let's see if I can do this, something, a box, a room, a desk, I can do length times width times height. Both of these will be on your test. Make sure you know how to do them. Okay, so mass 
is the amount of matter in an object. How much atoms are in there? It's measured in grams. It can be, again, kilograms, milligrams, centigrams. We use a triple beam balance, or we use just a digital balance. Okay, weight is how much gravity is pulled, is pulling in an object. It is not mass. Um, your weight can change. If you go to the moon, you weigh one-sixth of what you weigh here, but your mass is still the same. You haven't changed in your size. And weight is measured in newtons. Density, just know how to find it. It's mass per unit volume, or mass divided by volume, or mass over volume. Okay, all of those things mean the same thing. In, in class, I said if you had a Dixie cup, and your partner had a Dixie cup. You both have the same size Dixie cup. The volume is the same. And I said to fill it up with marshmallows. One student may only put nine in there and say it's full. The other person may smash them all down and fit, you know, 50. Now, the density has changed. Mass is how much stuff is in there. The one that only has nine, you don't have a lot of stuff in there. The one who smashed down 50 has a lot, so it's more dense. That is what density is. How much stuff is in a certain amount of space? Kelvin is the temperature scale used for extreme temperatures, as in going to outer space. Fahrenheit is only used in the United States. 212 is boiling and 32 is freezing. Celsius is used in science in every other country except the United States. 100 is boiling and 0 is freezing. So it says, which scale would you use to go record temperature on planet Venus? You would use Kelvin. How about recording the temperature from Antarctica versus the equator to prove global warming trends? It's science, so it would be Celsius. To report local weather from day to day in Virginia Beach, or in the United States, it's Fahrenheit. Make sure you know when you would use each scale. Also remember in science, always use the metric system. No pounds, no gallons, no yards. Alright, make sure you study your first test is tomorrow.